welcome to worship. Today in our worship we consider some more of Jesus' teachings about how to live the perfect life. Let us pray. Come God, come walk with your people, for you alone are our strength and glory, and we put our trust in you. Come God, come walk behind us, beside us, before us. For you alone are our shelter and direction, and we put our trust in you. Come God, come seek and find and put us right. For you alone are the light in the darkness, and we put our trust in you. Come God, we know you are near. The knowledge of your presence lightens our hearts. Help us to praise and worship you. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. God, your constant love reaches the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the skies. Your righteousness is towering like mountains. Your justice is like the depths of the sea. We find protection under the shadow of your wings. We feast on the abundant food you provide. You are the source of all life. And because of your light, we see light. You are our God, and we give you praise and honour. Jesus said that his listeners had been told to love their neighbour and hate their enemy by the law. But now he was saying that they had to love their enemies and pray for those who persecuted them, so that they might be children of their Father in heaven. Holy God, we confess that we do not always love our neighbour. We confess that we have despised others, even to the point of hatred. We confess that we have been hurt by others. We confess that forgiveness and reconciliation at times are just impossible for us. We know that nothing is impossible for you. We come to you seeking healing and wholeness for us. Help us, whenever possible, to live in peace with others, to seek reconciliation and healing and forgiveness. For your son came and lived among us, was betrayed and denied, abused and put to death, and then he rose again, and came with the message of peace to those who had denied him and abandoned him. May we walk in his ways, for nothing is impossible with God. There is no place we can go, no end of the earth we can run, where God cannot find us. There is nothing on earth or beyond death that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are forgiven, we are loved, we are reconciled to God, and so we live with the love of God. And rejoicing that we are part of God's family, we now pray aloud together the family prayer, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Okay. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroy God's temple, God will destroy that person, for God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he, ca he what catches the wise and their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then, no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos 
or Kephas, or the world of life, or death, or the present or the future, all are yours, and you are of Christ, and Christ is of God. The Gospel according to Matthew, the eye for the eye. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Today, we heard another bit of the writer of the Gospel of Matthew's take on Jesus' manifesto for godly living. For the first century listeners, this has been a bit of a ride. First, Jesus has told them that the ones who are truly blessed by God are those who are spiritually poor, sad, humble, righteous, merciful, pure, peacemakers and persecuted. Next, Jesus takes the main teaching of the Jewish scribes and Pharisees, the Ten Commandments, rules that the Jewish people have followed for centuries, and tweaks them to fit contemporary life. But what a tweaking! Thinking about murder is as bad as murder. Thinking about adultery is as bad as committing adultery. Breaking a promise will get you thrown into hell. And now, in today's passage, Jesus' listeners are told that those who follow God's laws perfectly will treat unkindness with kindness, cruelty with caring, evil with love. God's people will love all people, act in the best interests of all people, and thereby be perfect, just as God is perfect. God's people will know that, as Bishop Desmond Tutu's song says, goodness is stronger than evil, Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Except that in real life it can be hard to see those truths evidencing themselves. Hard for those first century listeners and hard for us today. We look around our country, our continent, our world, and these days it's easy to feel that the bad guys are definitely getting the upper hand. That all this talk of goodness and kindness and light is overrated. Throughout the Old Testament, we have God's people being nudged towards a kinder, more cooperative way of living with their neighbours. The Sunday School version of the Old Testament is that it's about the Israelites, the Jewish people, fighting the non-Jewish peoples and either winning and killing everyone or losing and being taken into exile. But if we really read what God is saying to God's people throughout the Old Testament scriptures, we see a much less bloodthirsty, combative picture. God encourages the people to care for strangers, widows, the orphans in their midst, right from the get-to. And the proclamations of the prophets towards the end of the time of the Old Testament are all about living righteously, being just in dealing with others, evidencing the caring nature of God by caring for others around them. So, strange though it may seem, even the adage of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth quoted by Jesus in today's reading, being originally one of the laws in the Jewish law book Leviticus, was a 15th century BCE improvement on the original tribal premise of if you diss me, I will make sure all your women and children die and your houses are raised to the ground. 
even in 1440 BCE, three and a half thousand years ago, God was trying to move the people towards a less retributive way, towards a fairer way of living. Fifteen centuries later, in first century Palestine, Jesus has come to refresh God's teachings again. Time to move up a level. Jesus is saying the old ways were good. They taught a certain amount of community of showing God's love. They let folks see how God loved and cared through God's people to a certain level. But now, now we move up a level. Now to bring in God's kingdom, we live in an even more caring, loving, God-centred way. We evidence God's in our life so much that folk can't miss that God is present in this world. In our reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, he's trying to explain to the Christians in Corinth that how they live is crucially important to what people think about Jesus Christ. It's thought that there were probably four smaller house churches in Corinth at the time Paul was writing, all run by different leaders. Hence the talk of Paul and Apollos and Cephas. And that, surprise, surprise, these groups all thought their leader had the best take on how to live the Jesus life. Paul is pointing out that although they all say they believe that following Jesus' way is the way to go, unless they can act in a loving manner towards each other, not destroying each other with their arguments about who is getting the Christian life most correct, it's going to be hard for non-Christians to engage with them. Hard for the non-Christians they know who see them living and interacting day by day. Hard for those non-Christians to believe that Jesus' message is the good news of God's love. Hard to believe that Jesus unites his followers in love if those followers are arguing about how to correctly interpret living out the Christian life. In every Christian denomination today, recognising Jesus as the foundation of our beliefs is essential. Whether Baptist, Roman Catholic, Presbyterian or Episcopalian, we all agree that. Here's what the United Free Church General Assembly says about Jesus. We believe that Jesus Christ is the revealer of the Father and that the mind of God towards the world must in all things be interpreted by the mind of Christ. We believe that when in our experience we are brought face to face with Jesus Christ, we are in the presence of the eternal and holy God. And the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland says the Gospels teach us this about Jesus. The Gospels reveal a Jesus who came to bring a new dynamic kind of life that brought with it intimacy and peace with God through having our sins forgiven and receiving a transformed heart and soul. How we use our relationship with Jesus, our belief that Jesus' beliefs are the best foundation to build our lives on, how we use that to form our actions in the world, that is the tricky bit. Jesus' teachings in the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 5 through to 7, were revolutionary for their time, pulling together strands of the teaching of different rabbis and leaders into one coherent whole, which, if followed, would lead to a kingdom being formed that was so counter to the present kingdoms and empires of the world that truly God's realm would be on earth in a very visible way. Imagine if in this 21st century, all the Christians on the earth considered blessed those the world pitied. Imagine if they didn't hold on to possessions, to stuff, but shared widely and wildly. Imagine if their word was always true, their motives always altruistic. What a world that would be. But that's always seemed too hard, too impractical. It seemed that way in the first century, and it seems that way now. We love our stuff. We want to make a secure world for our children, our own children, that is. One of the commentators I read this week agreed that Jesus' teaching is best received by the beleaguered, by those who are oppressed, who have little hope, who do not expect life to improve ever upwards as we middle class Westerners do. To first century Palestinians, oppressed by a mighty Roman Empire, pushed about by the secular authorities and being forever told by the religious authorities that God was displeased with them, Jesus' message sounded plausible. If you can't fight the enemy, kill them with kindness. Puzzle them with your compliance. Nonviolent resistance has, in our times, been successfully used to change the world. In the 20th century, think Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King. Nonviolent resistance. 
not condoning evil, not allowing injustice to go unnoticed, but not giving that eye for eye or tooth for tooth. Paul tells us that the foundation for our corporate Christian life is Jesus Christ, and that as a family of believers, we then have to take care how we build on our knowledge of him. Build wisely, and our structure withstands the storms, shines like a city on the hillside. Build foolishly, and our life together crumbles like sand, our light hidden under a bucket. Jesus gave very clear instructions on how his followers were to act. With kindness, not following the wisdom of the world, but meeting every act of ill will with grace and composure and love. Because knowing that we are loved by the God of love gives us a self-respect that cannot be eaten away by enemies and evildoers. In the first letter of John we read, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Further into his letter to the Corinthian church, Paul tells the Corinthians that unless they have love, their words are like noisy bells or clashing cymbals. In our radical acts of love towards all around us, we perfectly follow the will of God for our lives. Jesus said, love your enemies, pray for those who hurt you. If you do this, you will be true children of your Father in heaven. If you only love the people who love you, you will get no reward. If you're nice only to your friends, you're no better than other people. So you must perfectly love, just as your Father in heaven perfectly loves. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth makes the whole world blind. A better plan you can use is always to keep in mind that you are still a child of God, no matter what your pain, and so is the other person too, although I can't explain just why that's true. But God loves more than you or I can guess. 
And when we all can learn that fact is when we will all be blessed. Let us come before God with our prayers for others. Let us pray. God, make us holy as you are holy, that we may belong to you. Turn our eyes from watching what is worthless to behold your glory. Let your church show that the Spirit of God is within us, that we belong to Christ and to you. We pray that your church will grow in holiness, in outreach and in number. Give us grace to build on sure foundations. We pray for the harvests of your world, that they may not be hoarded or squandered, that the land may be respected and cared for, that no people may hunger or be abused by others. We remember especially the people of Yemen, of Afghanistan and of drought-stricken countries in East Africa. We remember nations or individuals who are deeply in debt. We pray for all who have lost their freedom or their livelihood. And we think of those whose lives are completely and forever changed by war or natural disaster, thinking especially of the people of Turkey and Syria, of the citizens of Ukraine, and of those in the flooded areas of Pakistan. God, give us grace to build on sure foundations. We pray for our homes and our loved ones, that enmity and strife in our communities may be conquered, that forgiveness and mutual respect may be part of our lives. We pray for the renewal of broken relationships and broken hearts. God, give us grace to build on sure foundations. We remember all who have suffered from fraud, from robbery, from low wages, all who have suffered through injustice, all who have been slandered or maligned, all who have suffered mockery or scorn. We remember all whose lives are crumbling. God, give us grace to build on sure foundations. That we, we, that we may all endure and come at last to your glorious kingdom. That we may share with your loved ones in glory. God, give us grace to build on sure foundations. Amen. Once again, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week... May our whole lives be blessed by God and may we spend our lives giving God glory and praise by the way we live. And now a blessing. Wonderful God, you call us to do the impossible, to love our enemies, to confront injustice, to share bountifully with the poor. You do not give us an inch. You call us to be perfect in our imitation of you. And yet you give us everything love abounding, the foundation of Christ and the gift of creation. Bless us, therefore, as we depart this space. Give us the blessing of a faithful spirit, a willing heart and a kingdom of grace. This day, this week and forevermore.